they just showed a really quick glimpse of him at the very end of the episode. Oh, um, that like was right him? Before. Yeah. Wait, do we know that's him? Is that spoilers? Spoilers. What the fuck? I mean, it's him. It showed his face. How am I uh -huh. supposed to know that? They didn't say his name. Because he's yeah. seen his face before. Well, how did he get over? I never saw his face in a in a hat. <laughs> his face in a hat? Yeah, you, you know how, like, <laughs> Superman and Clark Kent just have, like, the glasses? This guy has a hat. Get Bro. Who would that disguise oh, work no. against? You don't, this is not like, like, It would work, work against me, so... <laughs> I had a lot of like, work. Idea of a face in a hat, not like, not like a hat on a head, but a face in a hat. Yeah, dude. Like, we are out of here for. For a special episode of uh, Izakaya Studios, where we discussed the first episode of Attack of Titan of the final season. I was threatened, aka SP Kuba, and we had Ku. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Yes. How's it going? Taylor. Bye, guys. <laughs> Brian. Sasaki. And Sasha. Sasaki. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So what the hell <laughs> is going on with this episode? All right. So we start off with these random ass people who I guess is the people that's across the ocean that uh, Irwin and uh, Elwin or whatever they're going to fight against at this point. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm completely lost. Uh, <laughs> Irwin and Elwin. Irwin and like Elwin. The 70s soul band. <laughs> I forget the this names. This is a good start, guys. Oh, <laughs> the Eldians and the Marlians. This is a good start, bro. I got you. Is that it? A like flashback? All right, all right. No. So, I I'm gonna say uh, this is a spoiler free timeline uh, that I've discussed previously with an uh, another member. I've discussed of previously our with crew another here. Another member. I've... Just to clarify everything, okay? So let's just start with this for context. The year 845 is when the Colossal and Armored Titan launched their first attack on the walls, Wall Maria Falls. Five years later, we have the ba Battle of Trost, and that is when, at the same time, some nations from the Middle East see Marley losing the female Titan and the Colossal Titan against the Eldians, and so they power up, or they join together to try to destroy the Marleys. Okay? One year after that, so 851, that is taking place six years after the fall of Wall Maria. The Scout Regiment launches an expedition outside the walls and reaches the sea, aka the end of last season. And we're now three years after that. Okay, so it's a three year time skip now. We're in 854. The war between Marley and the Middle East Alliance comes to an end, and Marley comes out victorious and a peace treaty is signed. So credit to Tenroku from Reddit for posting that. To give you guys and obviously myself context for when this episode's even taking place. Wait, what? Yeah, so this is three years after the last episode of season three, and uh, we are introduced to a whole lot of new characters. Mm -hmm. And Does that I'm assuming, your question. I'm assuming they're not side characters. These is this nope. is going to be like a main. Main yeah. cast? <gasps> it all makes sense now. Thank you. Does it really? Now. Yeah. <laughs> Does it really? Okay. I was fucking wondering what the fuck was going on. I was like, dude, these ki these like two characters look I to the characters at the end of season three. I was like, who the fuck are they? I was like, oh, it makes sense now. And like one of them had the same name. I was like, what? Wait, wait, can you be specific? Because now um, everyone's like, what are you talking about? Um, the blonde dude. Falco? Uh, Reiner? Reiner. Oh, Reiner. What about Reiner? It makes sense now because he, his name was Reiner, and I thought it was someone completely different, but it wasn't. So okay. Well, yep. there's also going to be like all. I mean, all the characters look different too because it's three years in the future. So Reiner still looks pretty much the same, just a little bit more grizzled. Yeah, that's um, what I was thinking. Like, I thought it was like his dad or something. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was Reiner. And then, of course, there for other characters that we would have known, there was um, Zeke. I thought Zeke looked slightly different as well, but I couldn't quite put my finger on how. And then John was there at the end, if you caught that, Brian. Who? John, like from the original, what, what could it? 
Jean what? Jean 104 Jean you remember Marco's boy who was like dude somebody ate Marco and then he's like the oh one man <laughs> the one who always fought with Aaron always picked fights with wait. Oh, horse for it. horse face wait he was there wait what really? yeah, no no was, not they just showed a really quick glimpse of him at the very end of the episode oh um, that was right him way. yeah wait do we know that something is that spoilers spoilers what the fuck I mean, it's him. It showed his face. How am I uh -huh. supposed to know that? They didn't say his name. Because he's yeah. seen his face before. Well, how did he get over? I never saw his face in a in a hat. <laughs> his face in a hat? Yeah, you, you know how, like, <laughs> Superman and Clark Kent just have, like, the glasses? This guy <laughs> get that out of here. <laughs> yeah, I Bro. was wondering, who would that disguise oh, work no. against? You know, this is this a It would work against work. me, so... <laughs> the hat does he's a lot like, of work idea of a face in a hat not like not like a hat on a head but a face in a hat yeah it is like I'll, I'll be honest though just like brian i was completely lost i didn't realize that was Ryder and zeke like three years post either and then i also john I, or john wait. i did not realize that was him at the end so uh wait Who's Taylor was like, yeah, we saw John. I was like, who's John? <laughs> Your neighbor? You saw him stop by today? Like, it's coronavirus, man. That should not be allowed. You stop that right now. Uh, but no, apparently it's it's good old John from the crew. Uh, so, so who? Did you have any other questions? Did that answer what you were wondering? Uh, kind of. And then the other question was, Falco, why is it that... See, they brought it up in the... Um... In the recap movie as well why was it that falco was imagining kind of like he was like memories was kind of flowing through him like why was he imagining that he was flying through the air as one of the scouts Is i he... don't have an answer for you yet okay so hmm. i thought that was really i weird. have an idea but i but I, I i don't have an answer for you yet i think that's something we have yet to learn all right well i guess that's all i have but yeah, you know, maybe I should have just been binge watched all three seasons again because I'm I'm super confused. But I feel like even if I were to watch all three seasons, I don't. I think this opener of the for the season would have confused me as well. Even if I would have. I mean, okay, so yes. I don't I don't understand why in the first episode they don't say like three years later or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why they made that decision. It was like that. I believe it was like that in the manga, too. They just really throw you into it. But at least when you're reading it, if there's a couple chapters out, you can kind of just like blast right through until you get everything figured out. Hmm. Um, but there's going to be a lot of like going back and forth. Like the, the, the years that you missed, you'll find out like stuff that happened. But there's going to be a lot of jumping back and forth to kind of fill in the fill in the holes. So it should become clear pretty soon. I think that'll be like the first five or six episodes of the season. Hmm. Good. Fair. Fair. But yeah, I thought it was kind of a interesting choice too, because I was all, like, I've been saying, I was so worried that people would watch this and be like, who are all these new people? Like I've been waiting for season for the final season. I want to see all the characters that I've been watching for three seasons. Who are these people? I was a little bit worried about that, but I think people are mostly loyal enough to the show that it'll be fine. Nope. Not for me. People that left after <laughs> season one. Dude, oh, you people God. are scrubs. I've been a fan for seven years. Yeah. Some people have lives, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. Live free, die hard. I was the one of those weaklings that walked away after the first episode just because they had shoulder surgery and they thought it was a scary episode. And they did watch the show for seven years and binged it seven like a years month later ago. in the span of three weeks. <laughs> Listen, man. Uh, I gotta say, and well, man, uh, this was an awesome episode. Because even as a standalone episode, let's be honest, I didn't understand a damn thing that was going on. Besides, okay, this is taking place somewhere, but there's another wall, which I thought was pretty cool because it's symbolic of the show itself. The show is like peeling off layers, and every season, you get behind another wall. Like what I did there? Thanks. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, but it is... It is definitely confusing. So I'm glad I have some people I can talk to about that who can give information without spoilers, which is always really helpful. Um, but I just I just think what Attack on Titan does really well is it keeps the suspense, the stakes, and the tension really, really high. So even if these were new characters, what's the situation we get introduced into? 
it's war. They're on the front lines. It kind of reminded me of Saving Private Ryan, the opening 20 minutes, where it's just brutal. Like there's that one clip in Saving Private Ryan where they're, you know, they're getting shot at and they're hiding behind the sandbags or whatever those are. I don't know. And one guy picks up the phone. He looks over and he turns back and that guy's head's missing. You're like, oh, snap. That's how I felt like these Eldians. Yeah. Sorry. Spoiler alert for anybody. Um, but the Eldians <laughs> being on the front lines, being used by the Bob Marlians. And you're wondering, like, <laughs> okay, Dude, what the that's, a, that's the only way I can remember them, man. The Bob Marlies and the, the good old... <laughs> <laughs> the Jewish Eldians, because that's... What, and then you got the Ottoman Turks, right? Fighting them with their little red hats. Um, the whole episode was just epic, though. From the action, from the pacing, and even getting to know the characters. Like, we know Gabby is an extremely confident badass. She's like Mikasa in ability, but she's not like Mikasa in terms of her personality, right? Like, she's very outgoing, very outspoken. Which is why I don't like her off the bat. Mikasa is just like reserved, like, I'll kick your ass, you won't even know it. This girl's like, Yeah, that's why I am the best. Ha ha. Um, so I already have feelings about certain characters. I thought the action was really intense. I like how pretty much the even the Titans could die because these guys have weapons that are capable of hitting them, destroying them in one shot, especially if it gets to the nape. So I I might like my nipples were hard the whole time. I thought it was really intense. The music was epic as always. And uh, it just it felt like a scene out of a comic book movie, especially when they have all those bodies coming out of the airplane and they launch them in the air and then all of a sudden chain reaction of them turning into Titans. And then I love the fact that he's like, yeah, about half of them just died on impact. <laughs> so I was like, ah, yes, the gruesome realities of Attack on Titan. <laughs> okay. It does not hold back. So for me... It was confusing, but extremely, extremely enjoyable. Like, it just immerses me into the world. And I'll tell you guys, the most powerful moment, like, I, I, I kind of put shows into three categories. I think a good show entertains you, makes you forget about your day, in a sense. Uh, a great show makes you feel an emotion. Like, you, you might crack up, you might cry, you might feel sadness, you might feel joy. But, a gr like, a, the best shows... The best shows, they make you think afterwards. Like, they stick with you for a little bit. And there was a scene where you see uh, an Ottoman Empire soldier pointing a gun, and Gabby takes the risks of actually just literally standing up in front of them, point blank almost. Not point blank, but uh, within shooting distance, and risking her life for the sake of this mission. And there's two guys and they're having a conversation and the guy who's not aiming at her is saying like, just shoot her because she could be an LDN. She could transform at any time. And it, it kind of gives you this message of war is brutal and you got to leave your humanity behind because you can't take any risks no matter what. And so it's like when you get into war, when you play sports, when you're in a competition, when you're competing for a promotion at work, are you ruthless about it? Do you just like take no prisoners? Or do you do the opposite, and which is, uh, is it Falco who got his head injured? Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Yeah, Falco, who took one of the other soldiers and was like, hey, let's respect the laws of war, the rules of war. And, you know, uh, he's, he's not dead. He's not severely injured. Let's help him out. And the guy was like, don't touch me, you piece of trash. Hate your guts. <laughs> and it, it, it just does a really good job of showing you both sides and... I think we mentioned this last night. Nothing about war is black and white. There's no really good and bad side. Like it depends which side you're on, who you're aligned with. But loved it, loved it. This is the shit I live for, guys. Love this. Sasha, you're you're gonna love this season so much. Like you're gonna love this season. Oh, I feel the Titan steam just flowing <laughs> off my body. <laughs> <laughs> Does, All right, that was um... enough of me, though. Does anybody else have any other thoughts or like questions? I was gonna maybe provide a little bit more background information about like what the warriors were. They were mentioned briefly. If 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 you weren't understanding that or like the societal makeup of Marley, if you had any questions about that, like you should tell us. These people like yeah. enslaved or something. Like what is so, going on? So you'll learn a lot more about why the Eldians um, are being persecuted by the Marleans um, as the season goes on. All you really need to know right now is that the Marleans believe, um, and their history tells them, 
and I'm not arguing that that's not the case. I'm just saying this is what they, they think and they think they know <clears throat> is that their ancestors a long time ago had been um, attacked and almost like wiped out by the Eldians. And the Eldians are literally just people that can transform into Titans. Eventually they were able to get that under control and they had power over the Eldians. And part of that, and so that's why they're in, they're being persecuted right now. That's why they're in the internment camps, I think is what they were called, right? Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean... And so that's sure. where they are right now. And because those people, that all the Eldians that live in all those internment camps, I mean, they live, like, pretty not great lives. They don't have health care, really. They don't have education. I mean, it's 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 bad situation. They're basically locked behind a gate. Um, they Their only opportunities for really advancing or having any sort of a better life is to go into the military. Um, specifically if you have a kid or somebody who can qualify to become a warrior, which is somebody who is going to inherit one of the seven major, seven, nine, I always forget. I think it's nine. Nine? I always forget. I don't know why. But anyways, when they, uh, if you have a warrior, they can inherit one of those powers. I mean, that's what a warrior is, is they inherit that power after 13 years when that person is, um, passing away. And so if you can have a, if you can be one of those people, your family will be given special treatment and better accommodations. So that's why a lot of those people that are in the army are Eldians. Um, and that's really all you need to know at this point. The, anything else will get explained. But anyways, Sasha, that was a really great analysis of the episode. I'm glad you liked it so much. No, no, it, it was great. Thank you. And that's what I, you know, to, to Ku's point, I think he, he he made a fair point saying that basically, like, I don't know what the hell's going on and when is this actually going to pay off? I think I just have so much trust and faith in Attack on Titan. The basement was talked about since the beginning of the show and I was like, did they just forget about it? What's going to happen with that? It seems like we're going in a completely different direction. And then it comes back, you know, six, seven years later in actual time and uh, huge repercussions. So I, I got faith. I got faith. Well, I guess my main problem is the fact that they're adding a new main cast on the final season, which I think is kind of a weird spot to start adding new characters to the show. How long they, is the season going to be? Yeah, that's my question, if, too. We don't know for exactly sure yet, to be honest. Because there, I don't I don't know if I heard correctly, but I heard, like, from where it left off at the end of the last season to the start of this season, like... From this season onwards is like a lot of stuff that they have to cover for a last season. Is that true? There's been rumors. I think it's like either like between 16 or 30. People are, are guessing it's going to be between those two things. 16 or 30? 16. Yeah, it's it's a well, pretty wide the, range. Part of the part of the reason that number 16 showed up is because there's a leaker, a pretty um, reputable leaker, who said that the information they have is that there will be 16 episodes. But it was not clarified if that was going to be just for like of final season part one and then there'd be a part two mm. um they don't know and they didn't specify mm. i per, okay i know a lot of people think that there is a lot of information to cover and i don't maybe there is a lot but i do have faith that even if it were only 16 episodes i think they could do it i would really hope that they would give it more but i think you, they could do it do you think that it would do it justice if it was 16 or do you think if it was 16, the show is just... Brutal. I think it should be at least 24 episodes to really get into it. But we really don't know yet. I wouldn't worry about it too much. We really... We just don't know right now. So uh, that would be my suggestion mm -hmm. to not to not worry about it. Because I can't imagine that they would fuck up such an important oh. show in the last little bit. Famous right? last words. Right? <laughs> don't, don't say that, because Lost, Game of Thrones. I didn't watch Lost, but GOT, come on, man. But I have, I have faith. So, speaking on that end, because it's the last season, some changes. Okay, two major changes. One is no OP by Link's Horizon. And two is studio change from Wit. Is it Wit or Wits? Wit. I don't know. Wit, thank you. Mm -hmm. To Mappa. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you all think about the changes? Any noticeable changes for you? Just curious. I actually have these uh these questions like right ready for you guys too. <laughs> like the exact uh -huh. same ones. I actually liked the song. I feel like that's gonna be maybe an unpopular opinion, 
I, I mean, it's definitely not catchy. It's not something that you can sing along with. It's no, it's not like your favorite song, Sasha, but I felt like it was definitely appropriately very apocalyptic and creepy. And I liked the imagery that they had with it too. Although during the opening scene, there's like a part where all the soldiers are marching and they're all like staring fixedly at the camera. So their, their heads aren't moving. And during that scene, all I could picture I don't, if you guys have seen it, it was that scene from The Lion King a million years ago when like the hyenas oh. are walking along <laughs> and that kind of, I kind of Be just kept laughing. At, yes. And I yep. kind of just laughed. I couldn't take it seriously after that. But, um, but the song was good. It wasn't the song's fault. Uh, I don't know. I was kind of expecting more of a hyped up opening, to be honest. Um, for me, song itself, mediocre. Um, imagery very nice i like the fact that they didn't like spoil the entire show in the in, mm. in the opening itself yeah. mm. so it was just a bunch of imagery some like color rainbow like color bombs smoke bombs and stuff i was like yes this is good that's what a lot of people were actually saying that um that they were actually glad that like the opening was was like what was what it was just because like it showed no spoilers whatsoever yeah was, mm. yep i i I enjoyed that part the most. The song could have been better, easily. But yeah, was it, it better or worse than Red Swan from season three? I, I don't even remember. I probably skipped over season three. Ooh, I got I got listen to that. <laughs> I don't remember. Red Swan. That's usually a bad sign if you don't remember the opening. See, I hated Red Swan to begin. It's the slower song that they had, and I hated it to begin with. Oh, the hide one. Grew to end up really liking it. Yeah, the hide Ugh. one. Okay. Yeah, I well, ended up growing to like it. I, maybe I'm just like so like biased for this show that I can't like reason clearly i'll be honest so i i mentioned this earlier off off air but i, I have a strong bias against many op songs i feel like 80 percent of them just sound exactly the same and 20 percent of them are pretty awesome hmm. so this falls into the 80 percent category for me where i was just like oh, you know whatever um but sasageo i was not a fan of it at first it took probably four or five listens before i was like bro that part when they start going sasageo that's something. That's something. And then now I'm just addicted <laughs> to it. So uh, I, I like I like Sasageo way better than the one that everybody else likes. The the first one, like that one, I heard on piano, and I thought the piano version was so much better than the actual uh, version by Link to Horizon. That one I like the first thirty seconds, and then when they get to like the distorted microphone, like you're like oh, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I did like the visuals. I agree with you guys. The visuals were nice. I think more anime needs to do that, in all honesty. Like, stop showing us a preview of who's going to fight. I get it for Shonen um, or what's going to happen throughout the show. Just random images. Just, just show us random images. Something unique. Wow. I didn't have quite as many opinions about that. I don't really mind most openings. This one I thought was fine, too. I didn't really have any issues with it, but... The song sounded uh, creepy. For, in terms of like the studio change, though, I didn't really notice like nothing about the art threw me off. Uh, Sartan mentioned to me earlier that it sounded like there were some people online that were complaining about like 3G or 3G, oh. 3G. CG, um, yeah, the CGI people were, were like, "What were you guys' thoughts like on the Titans?" And, like, I actually the CGI. Don't mind it. I okay. actually enjoyed them. Yeah, I thought they were fine. fine. I, yeah, and I just binged the last three seasons, right? So I, I didn't make. I, or at least my eye, the eye test, I couldn't see any noticeable difference where I'm like, oh yeah, the CGI is huge. Mm -hmm. I guess the only thing I would say, I, I felt like, but I can't prove, I have, I have to look at side-by-side -side images. It felt like the outlining was stronger in the past seasons. Like the actual lining yes. of the characters. Yep. Yes. Yep. It felt very glowy and soft. Yeah. And, and I thought maybe that's because it's a certain time period or because they're the characters so it's going to help differentiate the two casts mm -hmm. but like i said i'm, I'm kind of holding my tongue on that one to see how much it, it really sticks out but it didn't bother me what's, whatsoever yeah I, w I was trying to pay attention to that too when i watched and it seemed to, by the time that i was catching on that that was a thing uh it seemed to me that it was mostly that way with, like where they were actually fighting like on the the actual battleground because like there were scenes where you know reiner was coming down from the airplane and all of those scenes they were still outlined pretty heavily so i'm not sure mm -hmm. if maybe it was supposed to be like a haze effect from dust being kicked up i'm not quite sure we've only had one episode so i haven't been able to answer that quite yet but i mean exactly. either way it, it still looks great so 
But if, I mean, for I me, for like for like the Titans, like I like I was looking through Twitter, and people were there was a bunch of people complaining about the CGI with the uh, with the Titans, and I, like I mean, I'm I have issues with a lot of CGI, and like the the screenshots that they were saying like, oh, this looks terrible. I thought it looked fine. Like I, yeah. I I I did not think it looked bad at all. So I, I'm yeah. not quite sure because like. There's other people that sh- that that uh, were showing like it's like okay like if you thought this was bad like what did you think of this and they showed like the previous seasons where that looked terrible and um, it, it, I don't know like what people were actually like like what were their, their thoughts at that point but I thought like if anything like the CGI definitely improved uh from you know coming from like the first season but oh, yeah, yeah I didn't notice anything I just thought some of them looked kind of boring like some of the Titans from the ori- like the first three seasons were scary as as hell like they looked creepy or they moved creepily or there was some some something about them that would just make them stand out to me as Ugh. for me and i didn't get that yeah. feeling with any of these but i mean you know every once in a while there were scenes in the original seasons where they just looked like basically normal people too so i mean it's whatever yeah i, mean, I would agree with that all right so we're probably just more accustomed to them now yep that probably plays into it too i think yeah. the one now that we're like talking about i'm like oh going back through the episode is the Titans in the first three seasons, they did have this weird, like, translucent look on spots of their bodies where you could almost see, like, nerve endings connecting. I always thought that was creepy. There was none of that here. But then again, to Taylor's point, it could be the, the setting we're in. It could be, like, this dusty, glowy look where everything's kind of uh, almost, to a sense, blurry. Uh, but... Hard to say, hard to say, uh, but no, there's definitely, I don't, I don't think the Titans have ever been like amazing CGI. I would never claim it uh, as amazing CGI because even in previous episodes, there have been episodes where the Colossal Titan, I was like, this looks like a banana with arms. Like what, what are we talking about? <laughs> I know, the Colossal Titan has always looked pretty terrible. Outside of that first episode where he's behind the wall all creepy and then his like little toe kicks the wall down, you're like, damn, that guy <laughs> looks badass. Toe. After that, he didn't really appear as badass to me. He just kind of... I like when they mix like the drawing with the CGI, where it's more like... It looks more drawn than it does CGI'd. But then when they started moving them and their limbs became like extremely weird lengths and proportions compared to what we saw in the cartoon versions, I was just like, yeah, whatever. The show's so good. I can forgive that. But I, I don't get people complaining about the CGI because it's not yeah. like it was ever magnificent. No disrespect to CGI people. I mean, I thought like 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 I mean for me like I've always hated CGI in anime, but like from the screenshots of like what they were posting, I mean I thought like fine. I mean, it definitely looked much better compared to like I mean we just started watching Gold Kabuya and that damn bear looked just awful. <laughs> but I also think good shows you can tolerate CGI. That's man. oh yeah, oh yeah. Bad definitely. shows it just ruins it even further because you're like oh man why did it go to this? It's like digging into the wound. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess some people always find things to complain about. I thought it was perfectly fine. I didn't have any issues with anything with any of the art at all. Yeah, I I, would, I was wholly immersed into that show. There's nothing like I was like, oh man, it, the eyebrow looks a little bit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Which is actually watching it. Because <laughs> I know, like, uh, you know, me and Taylor talked uh, kind of like um, after it, where she was saying that like, there was like nobody of like the original cast, and she was actually kind of like. She was nervous that people wouldn't actually just kind of like dive deep into this and thought like this was kind of like a bold move for a first episode. And then, so besides, I mean, it sounds like Ku kind of had like a little bit of an issue with like it's a whole new cast, but did everybody else like ever like I know Sasha, you said you were fine with it. Brian, your thoughts on that part? Like new cast was like. Well, like the new season because it leaving. sounds like everybody was new. Oh, uh, I mean, like, actually being explained like where it is in the timeline. Fine. No, you're okay. Okay, gotcha. Like, if you just throw me into this, be like, here you go, and not like zero information, like how it first was. Yeah. Yeah, I was with Koo. I was like, I don't give a fuck about these <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. Who I the fuck like, are you? Who is this naughty Where's little brat That's what I watch. Another one of the <laughs> but, fucking. But you nerds. will. Uh, you will. <laughs> it's uh, Sasha. Um, yeah. did you go to Reddit today by any chance, or no? Or like, did you look at Reddit like a while back? That was today. That was oh today. Uh, okay, probably. An hour or two after the episode. I'm not sure when. But oh. I just wanted to see general reactions. I was just curious. Gotcha. Okay, so was the general reaction on Reddit positive, most likely? Uh, from Yeah, but I, I went on the actual uh, Attack on Titan forum. So I assume more people are obviously fans of the show. Yes, that's fair. Not, that's fair. 
yeah, I don't think most people were like, oh, this is amazing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I didn't see very many negative comments. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, uh, like I was just going through you know, earlier, just going through Twitter. Besides, like this, like th- really, nobody had anything to like, uh, like bad to say. Besides, like you just the only thing that people were actually, I guess, hammering it for was just the CGI Titans. But I mean, if that's like the if that's like the worst case thing, I mean, I, it sounds like it was a pretty solid episode for most people, even with the new yeah. cast. Calm down. Yeah, it, yeah. And I think, coup to your case, mm-hmm. you're coming into this after watching a season and a few episodes, and then literally just watching a recap it's not the same because the context just doesn't feel right whereas if you had watched a full three seasons you you've known the show's ways and how their payoffs work and then you got three episodes of this lore that's completely different from anything we've seen before you'd most likely be more tolerant towards what you just saw but because everything's just like random as fuck seeming you're just like, dude, who cares? I want to go back to what I'm familiar and comfortable with. And those are Aaron, Mikasa, Levi, uh, Armin, etc. So I completely get it. But I think had you watched the whole show through up to this point, you'd be a lot more comfortable just saying like, oh, let me just jump into this. I know they're going to explain it at some point, but um, I will throw out a wild theory, though. Wild theory. Oh, theories. Okay. In some form or fashion. Armin, Irvin, uh, Istoria. Armin, Irwin? Yeah, yeah. So Armin, <laughs> yeah, Irvin, Irwin, Irvin, Irwin. I don't know. Like, what do the Germans pronounce W's? Get some Germanos up in here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get what's good. So, I I think those three Zeke, they are all related in some form or fashion. Um, I, cause I think they all show extremely high levels of intelligence. They got the blonde hair that links them in a, in like a show completely dominated by darker hair colors. Uh, I think they are all related in some form or fashion. Like Wait, yeah, I, my original, th- well, go ahead. How do you think they're going to be related? Bruh. Okay. So Armin, where do you get that motherfucking book from that shows like all the coasts and all these things, right? We, we haven't heard about that. And he's like, oh, you know, my uncle showed me that. Man, you know your uncle's straight up like some final solution motherfucker that got formed in the lab. So you got his uncle, Irvin. His dad was like, guys, be aware of what's out there. You could tell. And he was the one trying to tell the government, we need to get outside the walls. So he knew something. I think these guys are like great uncles. Plus, I'm telling you, there's just no way that Historia is so uh, important. Uh, the, the the What's her name? Diana? Diana Fritz? Diana Fritz, the one who ate uh, uh, Aaron's mom? Yeah. 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 Okay, blonde hair as well. She's part of this royal bloodline. Historia, uh, royal bloodline. Armin, key genius, but he's going to come over and be the next Erwin. You tell me all these blonde people don't fuck? They do. They are getting jiggy (laughs) with each other, man. It's just like the Lannisters in Game of Thrones. It sets them apart from everybody else. I, I think there's a definite play at hand with the show with these characters because they have too many things in common and I know them. They sneaky. <laughs> Interesting theory. <laughs> yes. yes. I got you. Dude, trust me. I, I've, I've had my crazy theories. I, I thought uh, Aaron's dad was the colossal Titan. <laughs> he set the whole thing up because he was like, I'll see you later, son. We'll talk when I come back. Boom. Titan attacks. I was like, you set them up, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Any other but theories that- you have? Um, I'll reserve them for now, but I, I think uh, that that's it for now. Uh, Falco's probably in that too. Oh, Falco, yeah. Yep, they're all just one giant. Is he blonde or is he more like sandy brown hair? He looks blonde. I, it, it's yeah, it, it's hard to say. Like <laughs> Reiner just Reiner seems pretty intelligent too, not as intelligent as the others. So he could be in that that's crew. Me. And then John, John, Gene, whatever you call him, he uh, he could be in there too. He's a halfsy, I think. He's got that like, he's got that. Uh, what what do you call it when it's like light brown? Like sandy, sandy blonde? blonde, dirty blonde. Yes, yep, <laughs> dirty blonde. He's he's a sandy dirty blonde. So he's a mud blood. Like he mixed with some <laughs> other. And like, yep, he, he's uh, half yeah. Ackerman, half uh, whatever their people are called. I don't know. So those are my wild theories, but it, it's what keeps me entertained. And then when they fall apart, I just I just cry myself to sleep. <laughs> 
I'm trying to think. When I first read this manga, I was so con like, cause like, I couldn't stop. Right? I just wanted to pull in as much as I possibly could, as fast as I could, because it was so interesting. But because I was going so quickly, I got really confused by some things. Like when I, I still can't, I can't remember her name. But like one of the friends that they were with, one of the warrior candidates, the one that looks exactly like Annie. I was so confused. Oh. I was like, is this? Are we supposed to be like following her? Like, is this is she related to Annie? Like, she looks identical to her. So, like, mm. I always thought it was very interesting that some of these characters. I mean, there's hair color, but there, especially like facial structure, I have been really paying attention to to kind of try to get some clues about things because, I mean, she straight looks just like Annie. And then I didn't think so much when I was watching the the anime, but when I was reading the manga, I thought that uh, Gabby looked so much like Aaron. Um, hmm. didn't really translate to the anime quite as much as I thought it would. You but thought she no. looked like Aaron. I thought she looked mm -hmm. like a potato girl. A... Yeah, she did look like that in the anime, but in, <laughs> oh, but in the manga, Sasha? she looked like Aaron. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yep. Oh, really? Yep. Uh... Sasha was dope. You know who looked like someone to me was uh, I don't know if they were a boy or a girl. <laughs> like it's hard to tell. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the what with the glasses the uh, remind me of uh, Miss Frizzle from the Captain <laughs> Levi's crew. <laughs> Who's Miss oh, yeah, Frizzle from the Magic actually. School Bus? Hanji, Hanji. Yeah. Hanji, thank you. Yeah. Hanji? That sounds like a dude. Oh, man, dude, so Hanji cute. is a bad Miss scientist. Miss Frizzle. <laughs> Frizzle from the Magic School Bus, but in the show, she, that's my nickname for Hanji. She's the one who does all the testing on the Titans. And she's like, Aaron, let me test out your body, boy. Mm, come here. So, yeah. Hanji is absolutely hit... my favorite character. God, I love her so much. <laughs> <laughs> she's awesome but she had uh exact same glasses and almost like yeah. that same color hair so i thought whoever this character is he or she or they or what whatever i don't know pretty hmm, sure it's maybe. a he all right thank you i didn't know it's just like hunter hunter karapika when they're like oh karapika's a boy i was like get that shit out of here <laughs> the cool character but man that was not no boy wasn't he like a bug what <laughs> no man <laughs> Karapika was like this guy who wore like a, a woman's apron and then oh, had no, chains I, and necklaces that would tie around his oh. enemy's body and like I, go I, to their heart. I thought it was the guy with yeah. like the, the turtle shell for like a helmet. Oh, no, no. You talking about like the prince Dude, uh, that know. was born or the king, whatever his name was. I don't, I don't know. know. I'll stay on All this. right, anyways, sidetrack. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Do you guys have any... I, I don't know how long we've been talking about it, but I don't really have too much else to add for this first episode other than I'm just so excited to finally see it animated especially like especially like once um once zeke joined the fight at the end there and he and reiner kind of had to team up to take out the fleet i thought everything during that section was done really well and also to sasha's point earlier when they were pushing those um eldians off of the airplane i thought that was appropriately pretty gruesome and just um very macabre and so I really like that as well. It, it it just doesn't quite hit the same when you read the manga. So it was really cool to see it animated. Of course, Threaten mm -hmm. turned and looked at me and he was like, you probably would have liked it more if you hadn't read it. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. Is he so wrong? not true. Um, oh. Yeah, oh, so so I will say. That's not true, man. I, I've been uh, reading One Piece and then watching it with Spanish subtitles. And they add so much to fights that I'm like, okay, this is why it's worth watching. Because in the manga, it's like one little image of them appearing in smoke but then in the anime it's like a full minute long scene of them dodging bullets the smoke rising around them and then flames right. enveloping underneath them no, you're like oh I, I meant more for like basically like the the like su the surprise factor not knowing like what's actually going to be coming up you're just kind of like just seeing it for the first time uh, I, meant, I meant like that, that because because like i remember because like, i was reading naruto you know like you know while i was like uh airing and like once i yep. actually read naruto it finished i did not care at all to watch naruto but then again, that that sounds oh. completely different because uh, the Attack on Titan animation is, I would say, much much better than uh, like what ninety percent of Naruto. I haven't seen uh, Naruto, but I'm gonna say yes. Yes. Yeah, Naruto. I, I, I haven't seen Attack on so Titan, but I would say yes. Yes, yeah. it was, I I can understand why it's inconsistent though. Like, yeah, so that, that's to, what I meant. Like, they leave the parts that are aren't that meaningful, like complete and utter shit, and then just pump all the money into like godly memorable moments like fucking kakashi versus obito and stuff right. like that like right just know where to spend your money and you should be good 
Dude, I still remember the the peak of the worst budgeting in that show was when they had a Rock Lee versus Rock Lee fight. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was so like, probably like ep- episode 50 in Shippuden. It was so bad. You're like, uh, Wait, Rock were these guys drunk Rock when they Lee made fight? this? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was when they were hunting down uh, Sasori, the red hair guy. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I think it was a yeah. filler fight. I don't even think it was in the manga. Yeah, I don't know if it was a filler fight or not, yeah. but it was just... Uh, it was atrocious. It it made you lose faith in humanity and in Naruto. <laughs> um, That's when I stopped believing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, do we have anything to add for Attack on Titan then? Any My other body theories? Is ready. Who, Brian? Uh, the thing that bothers me the most is the fact that they're constantly playing the memory thing. So, I want to say that maybe like the OP is hinting towards something because I think. In the beginning, it was like birds that was falling down, right? Like the silhouette. So maybe uh, someone's kind of like overwatching all of them. Like maybe it's the original Titan, Ymir. Maybe they kind of reincarnated into bird and they're kind of watching over all the other Titans in a sense. And then maybe the birds will come to play later on. Maybe that's why there is also this big emphasis on freedom as well. Because I'm sure that all the Eldians kind of like yearn for this freedom as well. And maybe that stems from like the ancestor as well. So... I think there's some kind of like bigger person or bigger entity that's at play here. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I want to think it's either time travel or someone's being reincarnated or or something of that nature. But I think there's like a bigger entity that's a part of this. That's that's what I'm getting from this. So you're saying the bird is God. <laughs> it, it's God's <laughs> eyes or it's scouts. It's scouts, right? So nah, maybe. I feel mm. like the bird is just there for symbolism. It's the Hunger Games. Genjutsu. Yeah, yeah maybe. Pachi's there. So we'll see. Who, we'll see who's right on this one, guys. Right. I think who's. Right. I think who's onto some stuff. I oh, know. okay. That's hell. Oh, now I got the okay, theory. Now we know. That's I got confirmation the right there. You got it. No, it's not confirmation. It's confirmation. He's, he's touching along the basics of kind of what we're going to get into. <laughs> it's whoa, definitely whoa, look not, at that. Look at that. All I needed was not season, spoilers. Season and a half and a recap movie. That's and I'm definitely not confirming that like the birds are God. <laughs> like, no, God's eyes, right? Whatever. <laughs> so it's not the Hunger Games. <laughs> Wasn't there a bird? Uh, There's a bird. The <laughs> Makiji like is her symbol. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've, 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 never, I've never seen the Hunger Games, so I can't. God. I can't confirm any of this. Guys, I'm not saying the bird was God. Okay, that's why I said the Hunger Games. <laughs> nah, nah. I, I heard like Hunger Game God. Of Thrones. There's a bird that's the, 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 that's like God in the in Game of Thrones, basically. You, you guys didn't hear like the little whistling that was going on either in, in the opening with that bird, but the birdie was cool was talking about. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't think that bird made call, a single sound. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever, guys. Here is just some dude that probably got hit with a flashbang or something and just <laughs> shit flying everywhere. <laughs> oh, <what's wrong? laughs> But um, if, if you guys are kind of like, uh, wrapping it up, I do have one question for. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who was watching the show as it was airing, but I, I know like you know a few of you who basically you know binged seasons. Um. Hmm. One of the questions, just kind of like random, has nothing really to do with, like with the you know with the final season. But do you guys? I know like a lot of you are hyped, like Sasha. I know you like you love the show. Um, do you think you would have? Do you think you would have? I, 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 I bring this up because like I know a lot of people were because uh, there was two different parts of like the Game of Thrones, the people who binged it and the people who were following it weekly. Um, there was like you know, like was it the the was it the red wedding where you know basically people like, people who are watching it weekly were thinking like holy shit but then i heard like there's basically other people who are binging it who just didn't even really think of it like that much do you think you would have felt like more hyped with attack on titan if you were watching it weekly or uh or was it like was binging like just fine for you oh no doubt um with sorry binging... i probably explained that really bad or really poorly but ho- hopefully you get I, it. I get it okay but with binging, you lose the time that you um, that you sink into the show, and then your emotional attachment, and then the conversations you have with it, and then the anticipation that comes with next week's episode, and either the heartbreak or the joy that you experience, and experiencing that over and over and over again. So when I watched, like I vividly remember what I was doing when I watched the Red Wedding. I remember I was ready to go to bed, and I watched it with my laptop. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like a foot away from my face 
and then I couldn't sleep for like the next hour. <laughs> and then the next morning, it was like the red wedding at work because two people got fired. And I was like, what the oh fuck? So we're all afraid, like, who's going to get fired next? Um, I, it was just the most, I just, you, you attach certain things to parts of the show. And I remember too, if you binged it, you probably noticed the quality drop off. Like in Game of Thrones, after season four, the dialogue got a little bit sloppier, I felt like. And then eventually, like certain things just didn't make as much sense as they used to. And you could tell they were going farther and farther away from what the author intended. Uh, with Attack on Titan, I'm sure it would have been the same way. Like I might have dropped the show. Just saying, like if I watched it seven years ago, and I might have been in the same boat as Ku. Uh, where he's like, you know what, season two is just taking forever to get to a certain point. But right. because I was able to binge it, I, you know, six episodes into it, I'm like, damn, this is holy shit. Where did this come from, right? So, yes, I, I think uh, long answer, less long, definitely, definitely makes a huge difference whether you're binging or not. Like if I was watching this from seven years ago, I'd be so much more hyped. I, I would have been like, oh! but now it's just a month's worth of hype, right? Gotcha. Mm, yeah, and to add on to that, I kind of wish I would have benched the whole thing rather than watch it week by week. Because I feel like if I did that, I wouldn't have dropped it. Because I really loved mm. season one. And then season two, like because of that long hiatus, I was it was really hyped up. But I think it was kind of a big let me down because of the direction that they took it in. And I feel like if it wasn't for you guys or the podcast either, I probably would have saw this episode and be like, eh, I probably wouldn't care about this uh, as well. So... Um, that yeah. was a brutal that was a brutal pause i mean after season like the 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 tone of season one versus season two was so different right that like if after you've been waiting for so long for it to come out i can completely understand why somebody would kind of end up dropping it like i, I can see why that would happen i yeah, think by the end of season on... two they picked up more but it was slow yeah based on the recap movie i want to say season three is probably was probably a big banger right it would probably bring back oh, a lot huge of banger. bands from season two so yeah i feel like it was my loss with that and then for me yeah. i enjoy everything more when i can binge it i have a terrible memory so the faster i can binge through something the better if i have to wait for a long time true i have a bad time listen, listen. <laughs> when i binge high q season two i was shitting in my pants every episode dude it was so good like why it doesn't matter <laughs> like, it was just so good like like the hype from like episode to episode there's just giant enormous amounts of hype like it, i'd rather not wait week by week because yeah like, i would agree with you right i have to wait a week for the uh, next episode i just want to j- jump off a building yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly like that for me too brian i yeah. hate waiting well, week by week like waiting week by week ruins the show for me to be honest because with, with Haikyuu, I think it like it definitely helped like me finish the show. Because if I had to wait like week week by week to just watch like watch like a volleyball match, oh my god! Like it just like being able to go through it and be like I don't know. I just felt like it was it was way more enjoyable than just kind of like like this slow you know running of you know like the fourth season of it that we're going through now where it just seems brutal. I I, I definitely feel like like binging uh, helped with Haikyuu. Yeah, I, I guess it depends on the person in the show. Like right. yeah, that's true. I, I, binged, yeah. I binged the god out of uh, Game of Thrones, and I got to the Red Wedding while binging. I was like, yo, what the fuck is going <laughs> on? Holy shit. But you were able to but move like, on right after that, though. That shit stuck with me the entire oh, fucking well, Never mind, never mind. I was, like, <laughs> running, I was running around telling people I'm wearing something like, yo, I just got the Red Wedding. That shit was fucking insane. <laughs> and people, more people at work like, dude, that was like five years ago. <laughs> Oh, people like the people that were at work that actually saw. They're, they're still like, shook. Yeah, that shit was fucking crazy, dude. They got the PTSD. It was just the bot thing. Is he was oh. the one that was just pressuring me to watch it, anyways. Right. And like, I was just blown away. But yeah, I guess I I can understand where Slash was coming from earlier, where it's like if you for sure like Game of Thrones, something like that happens, you have more time to like interact with people that were also watching and stuff. So. And you get to basically well, think of more kind of crazy like conspiracy theories type of deal. On top of game, well, the thing with Game of Thrones too that's different than like Attack on Titan is it is an hour long show. So I mean, there's even more to have to unpack and process. And as much as Attack on Titan is it does have a lot of complex um, plot, and I I do actually compare it to Game of Thrones a lot. 
Um, and it does have an ensemble cast. It's still just not quite as much as Game of Thrones. So I think actually, like, Game of Thrones for me wasn't so bad waiting week by week. Because it gave me time to, like, really read people's reactions and, like, look up things I might not have understood or, or whatever. But the wait between seasons for that or for any show that has so much, just so much information can be brutal sometimes. Hmm, yeah. Hmm. True yeah. that. Any other questions, Threaten? No. I mean, there's a few other questions, but uh, but you guys actually covered those, so I don't have to worry about those. So sage yo, sage yo, shizo, so sage yo. But anybody else has anything else? Uh, no, that's all, I, that's all I got. Bring it on, man. Bring it on. Okay. Well, this was the uh, kind of like just a special episode of, for uh, Izakaya Studios, just to kind of, uh, in a sense, get the was it the Attack on Titan season to begin. Hopefully, it was good. Um, we I completely forgot to introduce our names at the beginning. I was Fred, aka SP Kuva, and we had Ku. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. How's yes. it going? Taylor. Bye, guys. <laughs> Brian. Sasa, and Sasha. <laughs> I'll use this guy. I'll, I'll just kind of put this in the intro part too. But anyway, um, like, normally, if the, you're a first time viewer or watcher of the or listener of this uh, episode, we do a weekly podcast of just like an uh, anime that's airing every every week. Um, we'll 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 kind of discuss like how to go, you know, like going forward of like what to do with Attack on Titan. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Don't die. That's that's mean, bro. The first episode focus on 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 these guys. I mean, like I'm fine with it, but like I just think it's a bold choice. I thought, I mean, I guess they had John at the end, but bro, I, I don't even know who John is. Come on, that blonde guy reading the paper. Yeah, <laughs> you know who John is? John is amazing. <laughs> bro, John. <laughs> yeah, good old John. I love how they have all these ridiculous ass German names, and then there's just a John. Well, yeah, like, guys. it's like it's French. It's J E A N. I think it's supposed to be Jean, but everybody says John. <laughs>